This is uh, Morten from Ingus TV, and we are still at Canon booth here in uh, at Printing United in Dallas. And I have the pleasure of meeting you again, Jeff. Yes, welcome. S thank you very much. Uh, actually, we met Jeff uh, last time in Boca at That's the Project correct. Peacock uh, thing, and and uh, it was pretty interesting. Can we turn off the sound for a second? Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. Whatever you want. Yeah, I think it's easier with uh, our sound instead of the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Now, um, Jeff, you are working with a fantastic i300. Yes, it's very exciting. <laughs> I guess that uh, you have even just announced that you have made a new version of it called i300 Plus? That's correct, yes. Um, we launched it at Think. Yeah. For people who don't know what i300 is, can you tell us a little bit? It is one of the first cut sheet, uh, cut sheet uh, inkjet products uh, that we brought to the market about five years ago and right now it's uh, leading the way. So we've had tremendous success with it. We've got some great customers uh, running a lot of different types of applications that are out there and uh, giving us a lot of good feedback. When you, uh, when you look at a machine like the i300, it's a, it's a, it's a quite huge machine. Um, but I was thinking that when you look at uh, when Canon, I think that you were one of the, one of the first movers were entering into the sheet fed uh, inkjet, right? Yes. Um, why should people choose an inkjet machine over a toner-based machine? Well, it's really based on the applications, okay, and it's cost of ownership. So when you're looking at the cost of ownership and how technology has moved, um, how the industry has changed, you know, everything, want, they want it now, uh, or they wanted it yesterday. Uh, they want their cost down. They want to be able to turn it very, very quickly. The iSeries can do that. So, so uh, are you saying that uh, investing in, in uh, may, maybe the capital cost of investing in an inkjet machine is higher than on a similar toner base, but are you saying that if you have the right applications and you have the right volume, then it will, that it will turn out very profitable for a printer to choose that technology? Absolutely. And that's the whole key. Uh, you know, printers, what they do is print. Uh, they go after their customers to provide them solutions. We help those customers with the solutions that they're printing on. It's all about volume. So the more volume you can produce today, you know, when you're looking at some of the technologies, the volume and the cost doesn't go down, okay? Or it rises very, very quickly as your volume goes up. With inkjet, that curve does not go up as much. And we've had situations where customers have purchased the equipment, looked at their volume, you know, could be a million, two million a month, and they're seeing that they're actually paying less today than they were before and the uptime is tremendous and that's that's really the difference when you're looking at inkjet technology it's the reliability it's the consistency so you have to ask yourself you know the jobs that I'm doing today am I running the job and it's done and it's out or do I have to t spend a lot of time on the job in order to get it out and the customers that have inkjet they're running the job and it's getting out which allows them to bring in more applications, more revenue, and their volume goes up. You know, I like that approach uh, because what you're saying is basically that with uh, with the i300 and the capabilities of the sheet-fed sheet -fed based inkjet technology, mm -hmm. um, it's it's actually kind of replacing uh, the offset machines because you don't have like a fixed click base, but you have like consumables, so you can actually you can actually monetize from having larger print runs, I guess. And, but it's, but yeah, sorry, but my, my question was more like, um, do you experience that printers are good at inventing new applications when they have technology like this one? Never underestimate the customers. Uh, they are able to come up with some phenomenal applications that are out there. In fact, please take a look at the innovation awards that we have right around the booth of what some of our customers have done with Inkjet. Uh, it's all about you know what can they do to minimize the touches of a job. Okay, and you mentioned about the industry and the craftsmen. Um, it's we see it as some of these craftsmen in the industry are retiring; they're not being replaced. And that is a craft that we're losing. So when the I series was first come, you know, when it first came out, they took that in mind. And what they looked at is, okay, what do we need to have five years from now? And what kind of technology and how does it need to operate? It's a very easy machine to operate. There's a lot of checks and balances that it will do by itself, which is very interesting. And then when you look at- Like what? Well, as, as an example, good lead in. <laughs> when you're looking at from an operator standpoint, it actually gives you feedback on what the machine is doing. It will tell you, you know, when the ink needs to be loaded, when the paper needs to be loaded. So uh, from a skilled operator standpoint, if the file is produced correctly, 
and when it comes down, it's going to print it exactly what it's supposed to look like. You don't need to tweak the file at the machine. You just let the workflow flow. And is that also because, I mean, uh, I guess that with digital technology that, uh, that, that uh, you know, the designers and, and, the, and the people that create the, the input for, for these machines mm -hmm. are way more skilled today or they have technology that gives them the GT7 or, uh, or Fokker standards. Is that because your equipment is just capable of taking that output so you don't have to twist it because it's done already from the designer's perspective? Or? We're, we're taking the native file of how it is supposed to look and we print it the way it's supposed to look. Mm. It's very consistent. With inkjet, it is very consistent. Mm. So we're not utilizing a lot of heat okay, with some technologies and the difference there is the consistency. You don't see the fluctuations going up and down. But the reliability of having 1.2 million between calls, being able to produce 10 million in one month, and having what we call you know, predictive maintenance or proactive maintenance, I think is a better term, where we're actually calling customers and saying, hey, are you, are you not printing at all because you're not asking for service? <laughs> No, we're actually calling them because the customer doesn't know that they might have an issue coming up. And this has happened many, many times where we're calling the customer and says, we'd like to schedule some time with you. Uh, maybe on Thursday, we need a machine for about two and a half hours. Uh, but we've already got the parts. You know, when you say that, you also told me just before that you have actually, with the i300 plus, you are able to actually update it on site. I just before you, I just need to show because we don't have much time left. Okay. Can you show me? Uh, you have some samples here where you have the the old 300, if you can say it like that, yeah. and the new i300 plus. Yeah. Can you show me some this, of the this, samples this here? This is a great story yeah. because our early adopters that invested in this. You talked about the investment, yeah. invested in this technology years ago, and had the ability to. Uh, Was it these two? Uh, let me see here. Yes. Yeah. So our customers today, that when they invested in the technology, the great story here is that this is what they're producing, and now they're able to produce this. So as we spoke about before, it's just like you get like a color gamut and a density of colors that are way more uh, appealing, I guess I could say, right? It's more appealing, but from a standpoint of upgrading on site, it's almost unheard of. Um, most manufacturers today want to upgrade you to something new, okay? It's a forklift upgrade. Here what we're actually doing is we are taking this technology, we're actually having line people come in from Venlo and they're spending about a, you know, three, four days on site replacing the inside of the machine to give them the plus. And, and uh uh, one of the things, of course, I guess is a concern for some printers is that because this this is a, a, a extremely uh, upgrade in quality, I guess. Uh, but is it is is it more cost effective or is it more expensive or how how should we see this? Well, what we're seeing is it's it's a opportunity to go after more revenue because we were printing about five different cover stocks today. When we came out with a plus, we had 14 100 pound. Cover, coated cover stocks that we could print right out of the gates. Where on the other coated stocks that we have between 80 pound and 100, we're up to about 49 right now. Multiple manufacturers. So this gives them now more flexibility from a media choice, flexibility from an application to satisfy those customers and an opportunity to really make an impact on their bottom line. You forgot one thing, it makes it more easy for you to sell it, right? <laughs> it really, when you tell the story, it's a great story. So, I mean, Canon has always been here for our customers. We'll continue to do that. You know, from a service standpoint, we're always going to back our customers. But you're looking at technology, it's consistent, it's reliable, it's predictive, and it can make a customer a big impact to the bottom line. What I like talking to you about, Jeff, is always that you are so positive and you have this uh, really, really go-to uh, uh, attitude that I like. It seems that the printing industry has a lot of years in it, right? I've been in the industry a while and I love where I'm at. I mean, Canon has a lot to offer our customers today, not just in cut sheet, but from large format to roll to roll to uh, our electrophotographic technology today. We got some great solutions. How can it not be fun? Thank you very much and thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Great to see you. Okay, enjoy the show.